Hi everyone! Today we are going to unbox and swatch the Roman Schmoll Aquarius line and this is the Hortus Botanicus set, so the botanical set. Um, I have never used Roman Schmoll before but I got them as part of a sale um, <clears throat> back when Jackson's had their watercolor sale. So I grabbed this set and then I also grabbed three open stock ones um, in colors I tend to use and enjoy. So let's unbox it. So it comes with like this little sleeve. You do see the colors here you have on the back. Now all of Roman Schmoll come in pans and they're full pan. So that's pretty cool. I actually don't own any full pans outside of this. Um, so let's slide it out. Alright. Inside the box, Oop. looks like we have a whole pamphlet with all of their colors. Oh, nice. And it even tells you the pigment, whether they're granulating, non granulating, all the transparency. Even has the new colors. These are the ones that have been added, uh, their latest and greatest. So I am actually going to keep this kind of as a checklist. <laughs> so inside this little pouch here. We have the tin. It's pretty similar to a, any other tin. Um, it is a lot whiter, but it is made for full pans. So it looks like inside you get a swatch chart. Now this has the colors that come with it, and you'll notice it has some blanks down here. And that is because, let me open this real quick. Ooh, and they're not individually wrapped. I actually really like that. <laughs> yeah, I have... Ugh, it's too much effort to unwrap. So the reason they're like that, as you see, I have two empty trays here. So I can fill this with other Roman small colors or just other colors I want to complement this set. So I'll be swatching this just so I can keep it in here. But I am also going to be swatching on my Etcher Cold Press. Um, this is the smaller one. I will link everything in the description below. This is what I use for swatches now um, because I primarily paint in an Etcher Cold Press watercolor sketchbook. So you should swatch on what you predominantly paint on. Um, and then I always like to do the swatch cards inside. And that's just because, well, it makes it easier to see what I'm working on. And my swatch book is there in case, you know, I'm flipping through and trying to find a certain color. All right. so. I do need to unwrap these bad boys, and I'm going to unwrap them in the order I had put in my swatch book. I put a star there to remind myself. So cobalt teal, and I'll show you how one unwraps, and then I will unwrap the rest later. We can really quick talk about the tin, though. So these are actually in here really good. It's interesting. Some are nice and shiny. This one's a little dull. Man, those things are in there, though. Um... They have a few really hardy mixing wells. That's really thick. And then, like most brands, mixing wells under here. My tin, I don't think it's warped. I think it's the thumb holder. Let me see. There we go. I didn't have it tucked in. Okay, and then you have some more little mixing wells in here. It's a pretty decent size. Now let's grab cobalt teal the exact one I've all right so if you are going to buy open stock again only in full pans is what you get they are swatched which I kind of like the look of um they have their own number but the info you'll probably want is the name which is here on the back come on camera well it says cobalt teal and then on the side it has the pigment um granulating information saturation and transparency. So let's see. I'm just going to use my little blade. Pop this bad boy off. It's kind of reminds me of like an Andes mint, the way they're wrapped. <laughs> um oh yeah, they unwrap pretty well. Now it does have this little paper here, so let's see if it's gonna stick. Nope, popped right off. If yours are sticking, uh, this is with any brand, by the way. If yours are sticking, uh, put them in the freezer for like five, 10 minutes and you will be golden. Yep, pops right in. Now I could probably 
shift these over and fit one more on each side. But hmm. So what I'm going to do is unwrap the others and then I am also going to spritz them down. Now Roman Schmal activate really well from what I know. This is my first time using them, but I've been um, kind of researching and looking into them a lot. So they really wet really well, so you could just go straight in with your brush, a wet brush. Um, today I'm using a size 10 silver black velvet, one of my faves. But the reason I don't like to is any brand, Shrinka, whatever, that wets great. Um, I don't like the tug. Like, I will feel that tug on my brush. Now, you can use a pipette and just wet the colors you want, but I really don't like to just dip and then like dab in on a dry pan. Um, that's just how I roll. So I always spray the pan um, or use a pipette if I'm just using an individual color. You do you, I'll do me. <laughs> it's no big deal. And definitely nothing to argue about in the comments below. <laughs> so let me unwrap the other two and I'll be back. All right, so unfortunately I can't fit the paint tray in here but you'll see the swatches. So I'm gonna get a nice good dollop. Now I am, just like I use the paper that I normally paint on, I tend to, oh, need more water there. I tend to swatch the same way I paint. Now you can pre-wet and see how it moves if that's, you know, your thing. I tend to go, occasionally, you know, I'll mix it in the tray, but I don't do a ton of wet on wet. I usually go wet to dry. So that's what I prefer to swatch. Quin Gold. Oh, I always love that. You're gonna, that's totally gonna granulate. You know, real fast, I'm gonna swatch the card above too while my colors are wet so I don't forget. So I'm just swatching those two. Permanent yellow is definitely an orangey <laughs> color. Quinacridone gold, you can already see it granulate, and I'll show you more once it dries, but I mean just swatching it, it's granulating on that paper. All right, Benzimidol orange, <laughs> PO36. Oh, that's a lovely orange. It really is. Let me get a little more and swatch the card above, too. And I do have my line there just to check the opacity. Now we're on permanent red, PR170. Wow, that is a bright one. Okay, now we're on to permanent Alizarin Crimson. Oh, in the tray, this color looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, look at that, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna just swatch it on the card above as well. Okay, now we're on to Quinacridone Magenta. I do like that we have some Quinacridone colors in here, wow. That is, <laughs> that is bright. So Quinacridone Magenta is PR122. Okay, now Quinacridone Pink. This one rewets really nice. So this is PR122. That one's, they're pretty close to one another, but obviously different pigments. This one's more on the violet, <laughs> violet. <laughs> Violet side. All right, Dioxazine Violet, PV37, one of my favorite colors in most brands, but let's see. Oh yeah, just because of that rich, luscious purple. It's always a favorite of mine. And luckily it was in this set, because otherwise I would have just bought it. Okay, now French Ultramarine, PV29. A color I really like to use and mix with my greens. It's beautiful. Switch that up on my card as well. 
Okay, so this is Phthalo Blue Red Shade. That's why I wrote the RS. Uh, PB156. Oh, that's lovely. You're probably thinking this is a botanical set. What's up with all the blues? <laughs> right? Because I have another blue coming up too. But, got to keep in mind, we have to make greens. So, Cobalt Cerulean Blue, PB36. This is definitely going to be more opaque. I'm going to swatch it on my card up here as well. Like most cobalts. Okay, now we are doing cobalt teal, which is PG50. Rewet's really nice. This will be opaque as well. Just gonna add that to my card up here. Okay, now this ocean blue had me intrigued. So it's PBR24, PB153. But the color, when I was seeing it, was just, ugh, oh, look at that. Absolutely stunning. It'd be great for fall, winter. You can lighten it up and do a lot in the spring and summer. I just thought that was so beautiful. Okay, Mineral Violet. I wanted another purple, and this is a granulating purple. Wow, look at that color. That is beautiful. Now, this is PB29 and PB19. So, we should see some blue in there. Let me just swatch it on my card. But it is already pretty. So, let's have those dry for a second, and I'll put this in front of us because it's a little easier to see. So, up above are the ones that came in this set. Now, this is a botanical set. So, off the bat, you're probably like, okay, well, well then where's the green, <laughs> right? Because that's what I would think, too. But they've given you plenty of ways to make green, and that's what's cool with this. So, we have the Aquarius yellow and permanent yellow, which we can mix with all of these blues to make a luscious green. Um, you can even use your quinacridone gold. You just need to be cautious of the colors that are in there because this it, these two are single pigments, these are not. But I can show you a few ways to make some greens so you're not like, well, I have no greens. Okay, so I just grabbed my regular Etcher cold press that I normally do sketches in. I am grabbing some French ultramarine. Ooh, I'll put it right here. Some French ultramarine. Now I am grabbing some of my Aquarius yellow, and I have a green. Now this is beading a little, but that's okay. So then next I'm gonna grab some of my Fallow Blue Red Shade, as well as my Aquarius yellow. Okay. And I'm going to grab more Aquarius Yellow and grab my other Cobalt Cerulean Blue, which is granulating, so that's luscious. Okay, so let's start with the French Ultramarine and Aquarius Yellow. Okay, get some on my brush here. So see that there? If I dip it in the water, I can lighten it up even more. Dip it in the water again, even more. Now, if I dry off my brush and just pull it as pigment, there we go. So we have a nice green there. I can add more blue. I can add some of the quinacridone gold to it. In fact, I'll mix a little quinacridone gold to get nice olivey green in there. If I am starting to feel like, ooh, that's a little too yellow, just go back to my French Ultramarine and add a little bit in there. And I got like a darker olive, okay? It's all about playing with your colors. You can even add a tiny bit more blue. And ta-da! So, I mean, mixing, color mixing is really important with watercolors. Um, 
obviously Roman Schmel is not a beginner paint set so here is our fallow blue red shade also mixed with Aquarius yellow so I'm right now just using I'm dipping it in water to lighten it up dipping it once more now I'm gonna go in with a dry brush um, I am just using Aquarius yellow and the three blues just to show you the range of those okay because remember, as you lighten up your paint colors with more water, you're going to get different effects. Now, this is our, I'm going to mix up just a tiny bit more. This is our Cobalt Cerulean Blue. Now, the Cerulean Blue does granulate, okay? So, here is a nice one. Now, say I dip it in the water and lighten it up. I can even dip it again. Just have a really light wash. All right, so I've already got three shades of like a spring green going on. Now, say I take a tiny bit of quinacridone gold to that one. I've got a really nice olive green. You can go as crazy as you want. So say I take the permanent yellow. That's our one that looks kind of orangey. Grab some of my French ultramarine. And there you go, yet another green using the permanent yellow. So it's all about just playing and mixing, you know, so I, you can do plenty of greens in this set and you don't have to worry about having an actual green. Now, green is one of those things that come pre-made for you, like, so there's a lot of artists who don't like pre-made greens because they want to mix their own they want to be in control that said I, I love the pre-mixed greens myself um, <laughs> because I am more than happy to say I'm a little lazy and if it can be pre-mixed well why bother right so it's you know to each their own kind of thing here I'm just playing with some of the paint I have left from our little mixing project so that it doesn't go to waste. But yeah, I highly suggest if you get a palette and you're missing a green, in fact, I'm gonna mix just a tiny bit more, you know, make one first uh, because they did, for example, include the three and this one. And look, I can even make more of a teal color just by adding more of the blue. I'm gonna add more green to this bad boy. I'm just uh, I'll add to this one over here. Oop, my brush smacked my camera. So yeah, it's just all about what you want to do. Do you want pre-mixed greens? I'm all about convenience, so I have no judgment here whatsoever. <laughs> um, you know, do you want to use, um, do you want to be in full control? My thing is, is like, okay, I wouldn't mind being in full control of my watercolors, but what if I'm like in a hurry or I'm just sitting down and I only got a couple minutes, you know, because if you are mixing your own greens, get a little more water on my brush. If you're mixing your own greens, you'll want to start keeping a journal of your mixes or make a mixing chart, you know. I wouldn't suggest making a mixing chart of all of the colors in this palette only because you're going to have one really big mixing <laughs> chart. I would just say sit there and mix a bunch of greens and make your own green collection. But the thing to remember is you would have to write down those mixes. Okay, did you use a 50-50 ratio of those two colors? Was it more, you know, 80-20, 40-60? Can I math? I probably can. So, I mean, these are all things that you have to keep in mind if you're gonna make your own greens. Um, so I will probably make my own greens for a little while, just because I like playing around, but I will eventually buy some Roman Schmal green. Um, I'm gonna probably look through this lovely little doodad here. Ooh, they have a sap green light. Um, 
let's see, for single pigment ones, they do have some really nice looking ones. Hooker's green is one I use a lot. Ooh, this Aquarius green. Um, yeah. So I'll probably pick a couple pre-mixed greens and, you know, <laughs> make life easier. But at least I have these. And I mean, look at all these greens I made just mixing what we had. Now this here turned into a granulating uh, pink color. So it's actually really cool. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little better so you can see it. All right. So because we mixed French Ultramarine with the Aquarius Yellow, you can actually see that blue coming through the granulation. It's pretty nifty, actually. Now the Quinacridone, Quinacridone Gold, which was granulating as well, you can kind of see, that one's still damp. You can see it right here. So we have all those other shades coming through. So that's kind of fun too. You can make your own granulating colors. Granulating colors are mixes, by the way. I am all about buying them pre-mixed, but <laughs> at least I have my greens here. Some great olive -y greens. You can even make some more brown tone greens. Um, but yeah, if you buy this set, just be aware, no pre-mixed greens. But I have all of this tray space to add some more pre-mixed greens. And then I will probably add... <sighs> you know, I'll probably add one more yellow. Um, I tend to like uh, at least two yellows. And then I'm loving that red. That red is a beautiful red. Um, so I think I'm solid there. I may add a, another pink. Not totally sure. I'll probably add three greens. I like to do warm, cool, and kind of just a neutral. Um... The blues, I think I'm pretty covered on. I may, however, add, I don't know though. I probably will add an indigo. Now I know indigo is not light fast, but I still like the indigo color. So I'll probably add an indigo into here for my botanics. And then I probably will add some browns just because while brown is probably one of the easiest colors to make with your watercolors because <laughs> um, you can do it by accident I just don't want to sit there and mess around with it but let's talk about this mineral violet this is granulating and it is gorgeous oh my gosh it's PB29 and PB19 and yep you can see that blue coming through well I can you might not <laughs> but it's very pretty I love it so yeah we have the Roman Schmal watercolors. Again, this is the Hortus Botanicus set. It comes with those 12 colors, but then has space to add your own 12. And then you can turn it into your own uh, 24 count botanical set for on the go. And it'll look awesome with the extra colors you add. Like I had to get my teals in there. And that's simply because I do a lot of teal in my floral work. Um, so one cannot live without. But these are going to be fun to play with. I like how they react on the etcher. Oh, my hand. I love how they mix. Um, I love how they re-wet. They're not too sticky. So that was really nice. And yeah, I'm just going to be playing around with these and doing some artwork. Ooh, that uh, nice bluish green color we made did awesome. But you'll have to let me know if you have Roman Schmal paint. Let me know if there's certain colors you like. Um, and maybe I will add them because look, we've got all this space left to fill the tray. So maybe I'll add those in and look them up. Um, also, if you have the Hortus Botanicus set specifically, what colors did you add to yours? I would love to know, so leave that in the comments below. And until next time, everyone, take care. Bye now.